What's going on guys? Tyson the Trainer here, back with another episode of Sports Talk, and today we're talking about me, right? So, I would like to talk to you guys about something that I have decided to do, uh, and that is a triathlon. It's going to be something a little bit different that I'm not used to, and I thought, like, I've been trying to wait for like 10 years now, so I started in 20, 2014, you know, and like obviously, you know, when you first start training with weights, you kind of have no idea with what you're doing. Um, oh, sorry, not 2014, uh, 2011. So, you know, back in high school, grade 11, started training, you have no idea what you're doing with a kid. And as I got into personal training, I still had no fucking idea with what I was doing. So, you know, I've been always training with weights and I was always in like the modality of like, weights are the only thing you need, you know? You don't need to do any cardio, fucking running stupid. Like I used to think like, we were the best because we trained with weights and that's all you need to do, right? And it was very, uh, you know, that was my stance until probably, I had to say last year was when I actually started changing my mindset on that. Like, I always just assumed that it was the best thing. And, you know, I always just kind of poo-pooed cardiovascular exercise and steps. Then then steps came in, you know. It was it was weight training and steps, and that was all you needed to do. And it's like, there's so many more things that are more important at the end of the day, as opposed to just fucking doing weights. Um, and not just important, but also just like to change things up a bit, you know. Firstly, cardiovascular health is such an important thing that people don't talk about. Um, and it has like such a myriad of benefits. And, you know, doing your steps isn't going to do all that good for your cardiovascular health. Like, do, does doing steps make you healthy? Absolutely. Does training with weights make you healthy? Absolutely. You know, it prevents osteoarthritis and osteoporosis. It helps with energy metabolism in regards to, you know, the way you handle uh, carbohydrates from food. It helps with overall building muscle mass and having more lean muscle mass and less body fat is always be- uh, beneficial. So there's so many benefits in regards to, you know, weight training, but like it's not the only mo- modality and we should be doing other things in our training program if we can, or sorry, in our week and in our lifestyle. And whether that be yoga you know even though it's not cardiovascular it's something different it's mobility wise so you know like and running and uh, doing any type of you know type of sports and stuff like that so I have actually you know again there's something I was very wrong about and I don't give a fuck that I admit that I was wrong because I was just you know was such a one-sided approach in the way I used to look at things and now my mind has changed in that so with that being said you know something that I've decided to do is start doing triathlons as just something different I say triathlons, I'm going to do one triathlon and see how I go. Um, And, you know, honestly, like I said, it was more for just a different challenge because I've been hitting the assault bike for a while now. I've been doing boxing since, uh, you know, for about five months now. So I've been doing things like that, which have been fun, but I was looking for something different. And so, you know, adding in triathlon to my training regime and trying something different, I thought would be really fun and very challenging, especially, you know, with things that I I don't have a lot of experience with overall, especially with swimming. Um, With running, I can run a 5K quite solidly. With cycling, I used to cycle, not like professionally, but I used to have a bike that I would cycle about like 20 to 30 Ks uh, at a time, which was no issue to me. So now changing that up and doing, you know, all three components is gonna be quite a bit of a different feat for me. So I thought I'd create this video to kind of give you guys an insight about what I'm gonna be doing with that, okay? So firstly, uh, you know, with a triathlete, it does involve a swim, a run, and a cycle. And I'm gonna start off with just a sprint triathlon. So with a, there's different types of triathlons you can do. There's a sprint. There's actually, it depends on kind of how you look at it, but mainly there's like a sprint, an Olympic, and a Ironman. There's no way in hell I'm doing an Ironman anytime soon, but I'm gonna start with a sprint. So a sprint is um, a 20K bike ride, a 5K run, and a 750 meter swim, if I can remember off the top of my head correctly, I think. Um, it might be, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 20K bike ride. And then uh, an Olympic will be a 10K run, a 40K bike ride, and a 1.5K swim, which is what I'll be working up to for the most part. And um, yeah, so obviously I'm gonna be starting with a sprint, which is just quite easy just to kind of get myself into it. Now, with this, uh, you know, it is gonna involve a lot of structure around my day. Um, making sure that I can get this in. And thankfully, being an online coach, I do have the time to be able to dedicate to these, this side of things. And this is also the first thing you need to think about. You know, whenever you're gonna try something different or try a different challenge, or, you know, get into something different, like, are you gonna have the time necessary to be able to uh, involve yourself in something, you know? And if you're not, are you gonna have to give up things in areas of your life to, in order to be able to do this? Or are you gonna be able to fit it in? Or is it just not gonna be applicable? So, you know, for me, uh, having the flexibility of being an online coach, I do have the time to be able to do it. And I've decided for me, you know, uh, like 
my rest day is now gonna be a Monday. So my technically my starting of the week is gonna be a Tuesday. And the other reason I do this is because for me, I do all my check-ins on a Monday and I used to go to the gym on a Monday, but it was very stressful to kind of get it all in. So because my check-in days are all on a Monday for all of my clients, I dedicate that day to a rest day and doing my steps, right? And then for the rest of the week, I have tailored two-a-day sessions basically covering everything. So because I can't run at the moment, I have issues with my uh, tib anterior and my tib post, so I'm trying to work on those at the moment, which means I can't run, I get really bad shin splints. So in the meantime, I can focus, you know, slowly increasing into uh, my swimming and I had to think about that, and also my cycling. Now, the cool thing about this is I'm not, there's no triathlons for the rest of the year. You know, as recording this, it is the 10th of October, which means I have plenty of time to be able to start working in all of these type of things into my schedule. And this is also a cool thing. So the long, the further away you are from something, the more you can start to, you know, schedule your days, schedule your weeks. And when things get busier, you're going to be able to get it all done. But it, uh, like, you know, it's going to be more, uh, you know, more volume, more time, more of those things are going to be coming in the weeks. But like at the start, you can just kind of start to taper things in, you know. I've just started with swimming more than anything. The reason I started with swimming, because I'm really bad with swimming. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm like a drowned rat. And it's also something like I'm still waiting for my new bike to come. So while the bike's coming, while I can't run, I've only got swimming as an option. So basically, uh, and because it's the worst thing, it's the thing that I'm worst at, it's going to be what I'm doing most. So swimming is gonna be a big core component of my overall training that I can focus most on. Because again, cycling is not gonna be an issue for me. I do have pretty strong legs. Um, I'm pretty athletic as it is in regards to, you know, sitting on the assault bike for an hour. And despite it being hands and legs, for the most part, it's using my legs. So it's not gonna be a huge issue in regards to that side of things. But swimming is where I'm gonna be struggling with most. So getting myself a coach to teach me swimming uh, and then also making sure that I'm gonna be dedicating more time to that. So that's kind of an insight for you guys first. Like, so for the first few weeks, it'll just be swimming and then I'll integrate cycling. And then once my running gets better, I will be able to integrate that back in. And then, you know, given time down the track, it'll probably be January where I'll be fully doing a training you know, plan in regards to my uh, triathlon training. So I guess I'll give you guys a bit of an insight about how it's gonna go now, uh, regards how it's going, sorry, at the moment. So basically with my sessions, um, I'll just give you guys an idea. So Tuesday is weights and swimming. Wednesday is, sorry, Tuesday is actually is gonna be weights and boxing. No, it's not, I'm gonna start again. Tuesday is swimming and boxing, all right? So two cardio days on a Tuesday to start off my week. Wednesday is weights and swimming. Thursday is gonna be cycling and weights. Friday is gonna be cycling and swimming. Saturday is gonna be weights and cycling. Or weights, no, sorry, Saturday is gonna be weights and boxing. Sunday is gonna be a combined swim and cycle. And then um, Monday is going to be a rest day, and that's going to how I'm going to start it with. And then obviously it'll change as running gets in there, and uh, things will, you know, things will get more intense. So ideally, I want to do four swims a week, uh, two to three cycling sessions a week, two sessions of boxing, and four sessions of weight training. You know, and that is quite a big workload. So I can, you know, it's definitely something you have to get, you have to integrate into. You know, there's going to be no cycling at first for me not until my bike this week and you know I might only cycle once this week and then maybe next week I'll only cycle two times and still focus more on my swimming. So predominantly it's gonna be swimming, boxing and uh, weight training first, you know? And boxing has nothing obviously to do with um, the triathlon, but I just do enjoy my boxing, so I wanna keep that in there. And then going forwards, you know, the, the cycling will start to come in and the loads will start to go up. And then when I bring running into the mix, I probably will drop my boxing for a bit. As much as I love it, it's not something I'm gonna be integrating into my training program as I'm focusing on a triathlon. And again, this is why we've got to cut things out when we have something that's an uh, important focus for us. So it's always about for you, you know, asking yourself a question, what is my priority at the moment and what is my focus and where is my attention gonna lie, you know? I started with boxing first, I really enjoyed boxing, but you know, as I go through the triathlon phase, I will drop my boxing, as I finish triathlon, you know, once that's done, I'll get back into my boxing and reduce my triathlon training. So it's kind of like all these different things um, that I'm gonna be integrating in my life, just because I like to have an overall rounded approach with a little bit of cardiovascular health. And it's actually funny that I've noticed that like, you know, I'm enjoying more of the cardiovascular side of things because it's more of a mental push. For me in the gym, it's hard, but like, it's just not the same for me at the new anymore. Like I enjoy my training, with my weights, I'm happy to push it a little bit extra every week. I am happy with my overall physique in that, so it's not its not like there's anything driving me to go to the gym. But I love the routine of the gym and I love lifting weights overall, so that doesn't actually change. It's just the overall component of making sure that, uh, you know, just kind of finding some more mental stimulus, I guess you would say, and that's gonna be the cardiovascular side of things and that mental drive to go forwards. 
So that, with that being said, then we've also got to focus on the nutrition component for me. So things I'll give you guys a bit of an update with now, I will be covering this in the future as I go, but I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how I kind of start to nail my nutrition and things I need to take into consideration and kind of how I put it all together. So firstly, I'm gonna be tracking my steps outside of my swimming and outside of my cycling and outside of my boxing and outside of my weight training, okay? So I'm not gonna count my steps anymore during those sessions. Why? Because I'm gonna start tracking on a heart rate how many calories I burn on average for each of these sessions. And the reason for this is because now that I'm turning into an athlete, you know, uh, I need to make sure that I'm fueling enough for those sessions, but I'm also in good energy availability, all right? And for those of you who don't remember or maybe not, don't know about energy availability, it's the amount of energy you have left over after your training sessions. So for me, you know, eating 4,500 calories a day, if I'm training uh, every session, let's say my average burn for all my training together is 550 calories, you know? So firstly, I track every single session. I'll track my swimming, I'll track my cycling, I'll track my weight training, I'll track my boxing. Let's say on the average overall, I'm burning 500 calories a day from exercise, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take, you know, um, so you get your lean body mass, which I'm gonna also need to be able to figure out. I basically know it's 80 kilos. So you've got your lean, lean body mass, and then you've also got the amount of calories you burn through exercise, and you've got the amount of calories you eat, and you add those numbers out together and divide it, and then you're gonna find out what your energy availability is. Ideally, I wanna be sitting in that 45 calories per kilogram range, because another big thing for me is to maintain my current body weight and current body composition during this time. You know, I don't wanna get lighter. I don't wanna be a lean um, triathlete. I wanna be 90 kilos and I wanna be able to do a triathlon because for me, it's not about winning. It's about pushing myself mentally and doing the best I can at the body composition I'm at, being a heavy individual when most athletes are gonna be leaner for that. So that's that's something that I wanna be able to push myself with too, okay? So in order to do that, I have to stay in good energy availability to have no negative repercussions and I have to stay in good energy balance. So for me, again, tracking my steps throughout the day, then tra tracking my training calories burnt, um, I tell everyone, don't burn you, uh, don't track your calories when you burn them with training. The reason I'm able to do this is because I train a little bit harder than most people. I'm training for about an hour and a half. I need to be able to track the calories that I'm gonna be burning. Because again, I do a lot of extra exercise. I need to account for all of that. If you're a normal person, do not do this. You don't need to. You're doing three sets of exercises, maybe four sets. You're resting around a little bit. You're probably a little bit weaker, no offense. But that's sort of, it is what it is, you know? When you start to push really high weights, and when I'm talking about high weights, I'm talking about into the 100 kilo marks, you know, 140 kilo squats, 140 kilo remaining deadlifts, 200 kilo deadlifts, you know, things like that. That's when you wanna, that's when your train's a little bit more serious because you're pushing the big weights, all right? And it means you're an experienced lifter, okay? If you can't bench press, you know, a, lot, a good amount of weight, if you can't deadlift a good amount of weight, if you can't um, squat a good amount of weight, if you, you know, when I say a good amount of weight, most people who would step into a normal commercial gym would watch how much weight you lift and they'd be like, oh fuck, that guy's pretty strong, you know? So I guess if you're not doing those side of things, you don't need to worry about it so much because again, a lot of you just exercise for recreation and to be a little bit healthier and to look a little bit leaner, which is fine, and you don't need to worry about it. But for those of you who are more athletic and who do focus more on the training and try and lift heavier and you, your intensity, you know, people who are actually bodybuilders have quite intense gym sessions, right? I don't class myself as a bodybuilder, but I'm just trying to get that across to you guys. So, you know, knowing my energy availability, all right? That's an important thing. Making sure I'm maintaining my energy balance to maintain my weight. Making sure that I'm gonna be timing my food more. So, because I'm gonna be more endurance phase, I actually have to increase my protein to about 2.5 grams per kilogram of body mass because I'm gonna be, oh, of body weight, sorry. Because I'm gonna be exercising so much and breaking down muscle a lot. And I wanna prevent that catabolism from happening. So, increasing my protein. I'm also gonna keep my fats a little bit higher than usual because even though I'm doing endurance events, sorry, because I'm enduring endurance events, and it's gonna be low intensity training for the most part, because I'm actually gonna be doing a lot of 80-20 training. So 80% in low intensity phases, and then 20% of my training is gonna be high intensity or medium intensity phases. A lot of it's gonna be fat fueled. So fat is actually gonna be my fuel source for the most important part. And what I've talked to you guys about before, early morning training on an empty stomach to teach my body to be able to be metabolically flexible and to help with adaptions in the cardiovascular side of things. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of uh, you know things that I've learned about in my sports nutrition to apply in myself to make sure that I'm gonna be you know, doing the best I can nutrition-wise and training-wise to perform at my best, you know? So this is actually a cool little challenge for myself to be able to put my knowledge to the test and see if I can apply it. Another thing I have to be aware of is my hydration, but especially my electrolytes. So as an athlete, you are more likely to be you know, lower in sodium uh, or you're sweating more, which means you'll drop sodium, potassium, 
magnesium, things like that are gonna be very important. So I'm gonna be sharing with this uh, with you guys about kind of how I manage all this in regards to the lead up to the triathlon and you know making these adjustments and educating you guys about how I do it for myself and how you can do it if you're someone who's gonna be going not just into a triathlon, but anything and kind of how you're gonna apply that. So just wanna create this video to give you guys an idea about that's what I'm gonna be doing going forwards. Hopefully you're excited to follow my journey. You can give it a bit of a look around. And again, if you have any questions and stuff about that, you always can message me at Tyson the Trainer with two eyes on Instagram. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the journey. I'll speak to you guys soon.